The Sleep Hair model comes in a branded box and there's a hologram label to show its genuine licensed merchandise. And this particular model is an LTM 1050 mobile crane. The clue to its maximum capacity is in the name because this can lift a maximum of 50 tonnes. The trays are factory sealed so it's out with the knife and on with the slice. Then we can lift the lid and find out that we've been stupid because we've used the Australian method to open the packaging. So turning the box the right way up we can now try again. And then we see the crane is in the bright green Nordic colour scheme. This version of the model comes with the counterweight packed inside the trays rather than in the lid at the top. And the first thing we can do is to separate them and install them in the crane in transport configuration. One piece goes at the back and the second piece gets carried amidships to equalise the loading on the axles. Once all the counterweight is in place the only other thing we have to do is to add the fly jib and that takes a little bit of jiggling about to get it positioned properly on the side of the boom. Starting underneath, the chassis is detailed with a number of parts modelled in plastic. The driving cab looks very good with the Nordic graphics. And the detail inside is very good too. The wheels look smart and a particular highlight is the tiny graphics all around the model. Behind the driving cab there's nice mesh grills and diamond plated surfacing. There's more very good detailing on the crane cab including leap hair on the seat back. The detailing is also enhanced by plenty of hoses and cables. The main boom ram is plastic and the colour match of the green is reasonable. Each of the inside boom sections has got its own set of graphics. And the lattice fly jib is metal and reasonably good. Looking at the features we will start underneath. And each of the axles has independent steering which is notched rather than smooth. The model rolls reasonably well in a straight line although the lack of suspension sometimes means that a wheel is not quite grounded. And the notch steering is able to hold a pose so the model turns well. Anyway yes it's setup time. Of course a real crane doesn't get tilted like this in order to get the outriggers out. But hey this is cranes etc and anything is possible. The pads unscrew down and the pistons have nice smooth faces. And spreader plates are also supplied. The pads can be offset for transport when they're tucked under the crane and when in service you can pin them into position. The range of travel isn't great though but you can just about get the model wheels free. The crane comes ready reeved out of the box so the only thing we need to do is to unhook it from the front of the cab. And now we can get excited as we raise our boom. It goes up easily enough but it doesn't rise to a steep enough angle. And also the ram is not really stiff enough so you have to pin it if you want to hold a pose. The crane rotates quite smoothly and here it is turning round to pick up the remaining counterweight. But it can't quite do that in the model world so you have to resort to the giant hand crane to fit the remaining counterweight on the underneath. Once that's in place the scaling is very good because there's no fouling as the crane turns. The boom sections telescope in the normal way and it's all fairly smooth. And there's the usual spring clip locking system at full extension. Also supplied with the model so that you can keep a tension on the hook is a heavy weight. And with that on board you can insert a key into the winch drum and then you can play it being a crane operator. So the basic functionality is okay and there are some other features. Firstly the crane cap tilts so the operator gets a restful view when he's working at height. And the ram that controls the cab is stiff so it holds the pose easily. There is another small feature on the cab and that's there's a access platform which just pulls out from underneath the cab to provide a step for operator access. There is another slightly unusual feature which is that the ladder stored under the cab is removable but it's a little bit short for doing anything useful on the crane. As an option you can fit the fly jib and you should be able to separate the short assembly jib if you want to. However removing the tight plastic locking clips on the review model was extremely difficult. So let's just press ahead with putting the fly jib on and you have to open it up and pin it. And it's a pity that you can't use it in the folded configuration because there are no pulleys at the end of the lattice section. 
To fit the jib there's a little bit of de-rigging to do and the first thing is to remove the hoist cutoff chain and then you unhook the hoist rope from the tie off shackle. After that things are straightforward because you just offer up the fly jib and using the big steel pins that are provided you lock it into place. Once it's all re-rigged you get an impressive looking model. So let's now do a dimensional check and to the top of the main boom it's about 30 inches or 75 centimetres and to the top of the fly jib it's about 41 inches or 104 centimetres. Now it's time to give the crane a loading test. So with the boom set at 33 centimetres which is 16.7 metres and at a radius of 20 centimetres which is 10 metres the real crane can lift 13 tonnes. I mentioned that the boom ram wasn't very stiff so we've had to cheat a little by putting some tape around the piston to stop the ram slipping and then we can start our loading test. If we scale 13 tonnes down it becomes 0.1 kilograms so let's put that on the crane and see how it does and it holds it with no problem. If we try it with 0.2 kilograms that's double the load and it's also stable and doesn't want to tip over. So let's try a little bit more and this time it's 0.3 kilograms which is triple the rated load and as you might expect that's too much and the crane wants to tip over. So overall the loading test is quite realistic. This is another highly detailed crane model from WSI and it's certainly a very attractive looking model in the colours of Nordic Crane. This model first came out in Liebherr colours about 5 years ago so some aspects of the functionality could be improved now but overall it's certainly an easy model to highly recommend. 